Hi, Ben here and welcome back to the Craft Lab for the third part of our pole lathe chisel sharpening series. So if you've tuned into the other ones, you've seen us sharpen the gouge and the skew chisel. And now we're gonna do one of my favorite chisels actually, which is the flat chisel. So the flat chisel is a fairly conventional carpenter's chisel. It's not necessarily designed for turning. This is a 40 mil wide former chisel, which I really like. And I use it for other craft projects as well. So if I've got to cut joints or anything like that, this is the tool that I use. And you can actually see that the handle itself has been hammered quite a few times as well. So that's rounded over. But yeah, this is my one of my favorite flat chisels. You'll find that when you're turning on the pole lathe, when you're learning, if you can go for the widest chisel, so normally a two inch or 50 mil, if you can keep those corners clear when you're turning, it's gonna save you a lot of aggro when you're learning. So you'll see this chisel in action in our introduction to green woodworking or in our other green woodworking videos. And I love it because it gives you a beautiful smooth surface on your turned item. So for planing cuts, if you're working on a rounder's bat and you wanna get this lovely smooth finish from one end to the other, this is the tool to use. Now, to sharpen this, as with the other tools, I find that a hollow grind is a real benefit. It means that when you come to hone the chisel, you've got very little material to remove, but also the hollow grind, that concave grind, will mirror the piece of wood that you're turning. So it will sit nicely on the wood and support the, the chisel itself and prevent any kind of rattle or chattering that you might get. Now this is quite a good chisel to show you because this is pretty much prime time to actually regrind it. So the hollow grind is almost totally gone now. You can see where we've honed it, it's almost a totally flat bevel, just a tiny little bit of hollow grind left in the middle. So it's, it's, it's ready for the grindstone. So we'll show you how we set it up. We're gonna use the same universal jig that we used for grinding the skew chisel. And we're gonna place the chisel into the jig, leaving about two inches again, sticking out. And it's important that we line it up so that we try and keep these edges square, 90 degrees to the face of the jig. If you wanted to, you could use a little engineer square. Some people slide it up against this stop, but obviously if your chisel edge isn't parallel, that can, that can throw it out. So I tend to like to place it in the middle and sort of visually line it up. And as before with the skew chisel, it's really important that when we tighten these screws up that we make sure that we tighten them equally. We don't want this to twist in the jig, so we want these two parts of the jig to be parallel and applying equal pressure on the chisel itself. So check that that's looking good. And obviously I've placed it so that the flat side is up and the bevel that we want to grind is on the underside. So that's ready to set the angle. So we'll take it to the grinder. So we'll slide the jig onto that supporting arm again. And at this stage, this is where I look from the side and I wanna see where that bevel is hitting the stone. Now at the moment I can see that it's just hitting the back edge of that, that bevel. And I'm kind of happy with how this chisel's performing. This is about a sort of 30 degree angle on there. So I don't necessarily wanna change that angle like we did on the skew chisel video. So what I wanna do is adjust that so that it's hitting more in the middle of the bevel. So I'm gonna slacken these screws and using this real nice fine adjuster, I want this jig to come out slightly so that more of the front of the bevel makes contact with the stone so you can just gently wind that out and have another look. This is where a lamp or light from a window is a real advantage to you so you can see exactly what you're doing. That's looking kind of good. So I'm just gonna make a simple swipe on the stone, see where it's making contact. Apply a little bit more of that pen so you can see. Sometimes you don't need to apply pen because if you've been working on something like oak or chestnut or something like that, you'll find that the carbon steel will react with the tannins in the wood 
and you'll end up with quite a lot of oxidization on the bevel itself so let's have a look so it's hitting more on the back edge of the bevel so if anything I want to bring that tool arm out a little bit further so the contact is more in the middle of the bevel of the stone so let's just slide that in and just take that out a little bit the fine adjustment on this is, is really quite useful. So a little swipe. Yeah, so now we're hitting more in the middle of that bevel. So I'm pretty much happy with how that looks so we can start grinding. So slide it back on, turn the grinder on. Always make sure that the stone, if it runs dry, just keep topping up your water bath. And then we're gonna apply fairly hard pressure, putting quite a lot of leverage on this chisel handle and sliding it across the stone. Now, a few mistakes that I used to make when I first had a Tormek grinder was I'd get carried away with what I was doing, come too far to the edge of the stone, and this would drop off the edge of the jig. So what I tend to do is I put my finger on the end of there so that I know that it won't slide off the end. Try and slide it all the way along. One, so it wears the stone evenly but also if there are any high spots or low spots on the stone you'll still get a relatively even grind I'll just have a quick look at that so we can start to see that it's grinding we've got a little bit further to go on that front edge of the bevel that's looking fairly even all the way along so just continue doing that until we can start to see that burr occurring So keep grinding until you can see that burr again, that little feather of steel. And I can see that it's pretty much the same width all the way from corner to corner. The corners are always the thing that gets damaged the most on the tool if you drop it or you hit a bit hard knot or something. So make sure that you get the, the burr all the way from tip to tip. You don't use the corners all the time, but you're going to try and maximize the use of the width of the chisel. And obviously if you're using it for cutting mortises and things like that, having those corners is going to be a good thing. So that's the grinding done. We've got that nice hollow grind on the bevel side. We can't do any kind of work on the grinder on this flat side. I wouldn't really be tempted to use the flat edge of the, the wheel itself to do any grinding here. I'm just going to keep that dead flat. So. Once you're happy, we can then remove the jig. The jigs are made from aluminium, so if you do happen to clonk your chisel into the jig itself, it's not gonna do a lot of damage to that. And then we can think about honing it. So we'll move our chisels that we've already ground and honed out of the way. And we're gonna use a Japanese water stone to hone the chisel now. So, take that out, that's been soaking. I like to use Japanese water stones because they're relatively soft, they're constantly bringing up fresh grit. I like the convenience of using water as a lubricant so you don't have to use oil or anything like that. It's a little bit more environmentally friendly. And I like the results that you get really, you get razor sharp edges straight off the stone. So this is a Japanese water stone, what they call a combination stone, so it's two grits in one. So we've got a thousand grit one side, this red brick color, and then we've got a six thousand grit, which is this fine sort of yellow marbly color. So we'll start with a thousand grit. Like I say, the first thing that we probably want to try and do is to polish this back edge. Now, when you get a new chisel or you're restoring an old chisel, getting this flat and polished and any sort of rust or pitting out is essential, almost more so than grinding the actual bevel itself. So flat side of the stone, put a little bit of water on there and we're gonna polish this back edge. So lay that dead flat on the stone. You'll find that if you've got a very flat chisel and a very flat stone, it almost sort of sucks itself to the surface. And we're gonna just push back and forth pretty hard I suppose we're giving it a fair bit of welly so that it stays nice and flat 
and then we'll take it off and we'll just clean off any slurry and we can see that if anything it's slightly hollow almost here very slightly and I can see that it's polished that just that edge and the very cutting edge itself a little bit of wear on that corner so if anything I could just do a few more passes just to get that dead flat if you've got a very rusty chisel or an old chisel or you've got a lot of damage on that backside you can use a very coarse piece of sandpaper stuck to a piece of glass or you can use a diamond stone something like that to really hog off some of that material don't be tempted to use a, a grinder or a linisher or anything like that because you'll probably find that you won't make it too absolutely flat which is what you need so that's pretty good so now I've got to concentrate on actually honing that bevel so surface water is a good thing that's going to show you when you're actually dead on that bevel so I'm going to rest it with the bevel side down I'm going to keep lifting that backhand until I feel that it like clicks when it makes contact with the stone and I can see that surface water sort of squirt out and then I'm going to very gently going to push now you'll notice I don't go square like this because I find that if you try and use the whole width of the stone and do the whole width of the chisel all in one pass you'll find that it's very difficult to push and it's likely to dig in and sort of rock and you'll round your bevel over so I find that if you hold it at sort of 45 degrees it's very easy to push then and you'll find you'll get better results so a few passes when you're learning you might find that you only want to actually hone on that push stroke when you get a bit more competent you can actually just go back and forth so relatively even pressure not pushing super duper hard a few passes and then we'll just wipe off that slurry and you can start to see it's removed pretty much a band of of bevel it's removed more off the corners because they're thinner but we can still see we've got the hollow grind right in the middle of the chisel and I can see there's probably like a maybe half a mil of polished bevel now at the very front so if you wanted to strengthen that tool if I was going to be cutting joints with it and it wants to be a bit tougher that edge then I would actually hone it a little bit more for, for turning that's absolutely fine really but we'll just do a little bit more just so that you can see it a little bit easier there you go we can see that we've got pretty much a band of light all the way along now so that would work it's got rid of that real heavy burr from the grinder but I'll just do a very light pass on that backside just to weaken that burr slightly and then we can flip it over and we'll repeat the same process but on the 6000 grit side so a little bit of water if you want to flatten off that backside again and you'll probably hear, you can almost hear that this is a finer grit stone because it hardly makes any noise really. But it is removing steel, look, because it starts to go grey. So then we we'll flip it over to the bevel side. And we're just refining those, the scratch pattern and getting a really nice polished edge on that chisel. And that's pretty good. You'll find that it's removed pretty much all the burr but just to make sure that you get rid of any microscopic burr that you can't feel with your fingers we're going to use the strop again so move the stone out of the way at this stage I tend to dry my bench a little bit as well so there's not too much water about and then we're going to use our strop so this is a paddle strop that we make it's got a piece of leather stuck to a board and then I apply a little bit of Tormek paste on there, this is a polishing paste and that's going to put a really nice mirror finish on our chisel so we'll do the flat side to start with and then lay the bevel on, now you'll notice that I'm only coming away from the cutting edge don't be tempted to push forward, all you'll do is cut into a very gritty bit of leather and it'll blunten your tool so alternate the strokes then, a stroke on each side just to remove that burr and that's pretty much ready to rock so remove any of that slurry and you can see now we've got a very highly polished cutting edge even our backside 
is really nice and polished as well now. So we've got our freshly sharpened flat carpenter's chisel and we'll see how that works. So we're going to use this for smoothing out this surface. This is the texture that's left from the, the gouge. So now using the bevel side down, holding it at a slight angle, we're going to lay that on and get those lovely streamers of shavings coming off. Beautiful smooth finish. So we've stropped the tool, we've made sure that we've got rid of any burr. So I like to just check by sort of running my fingers off the edge, make sure I can't feel any burr catching my skin. And then test for sharpness. I like to just touch it on my thumbnail at a very acute angle. And if it bites in, pretty much know that that's gonna cut wood nicely and that'll be perfect on the pole lathe. Now, the one thing I haven't mentioned about this particular chisel this is what we call a former chisel, so it's actually got these sort of shaped edges to it, which when you're using it on the pole lathe for turning, it's a real advantage that these corners don't drag and leave a little mark on the, on the wood itself. If you've got a normal chisel that's got square edges, it's actually worth just grinding those corners off on the wheel of the grinder, just to prevent those marks being sort of put into your woodwork. Um, so yeah, that's ready to rock really. So prevention of any kind of moisture making any rust on our cutting edges obviously we've been using Japanese water stones so I like to just apply a little bit of oil this is camellia oil that means that it will drive any moisture off and if I'm not necessarily using the chisel today when I do get it out of my tool roll it means that it's still going to be nice and polished and razor sharp ready to go so that's the third chisel in the series obviously we've used the Tormek grinder for regrinding it if you haven't got access to a grinder, see if you can get somebody to do it for you, or you can have to set to with coarser stones like a diamond stone, or a coarser water stone, or even sandpaper. But what you'll find is if you're creating that initial bevel with a stone, you're not gonna have that hollow grinder which is gonna make it slightly easier to hone at a later date, but you, you will be able to do it. So hopefully you've enjoyed seeing how that we do the sharpening on this flat carpenter's chisel and tune in for the other videos for our other chisels in the series. Thanks again.